That way, it's going to be easier to switch your artifact between your characters since we still don't have proper loadout. Yeah, I know I'm giving a backhanded comment, uh, compliment, because we still don't have the character artifact loadout! I'm still upset about this shit. I, I swear to God, give us a loadout! Subscribe, please! Hello, YouTube. Hi, guys. It's an absolute pleasure to have you today. I'm coming to you live because we have a new developer's discussion and I want to go over everything really quickly. Um, so, this came out basically yesterday. Uh, I was really busy, unfortunately, so I didn't get the, the time to actually deal with this. But we are going to have a look right now. I opened it on the side window here and we can see everything. So... First and foremost, we are going to be talking about a new autolock feature for the artifact, or more like a update to the artifact autolock feature. On top of that, and most importantly, we have the increased damage for certain... Sorry, my cat's being a, 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 a nightmare. Uh, for certain elemental reaction. Okay, so new developer discussion here. Take a look at the optimization that this new version update has in store for us. Fair enough. Treasure Compass. I think I actually talked about this in the last live stream. Am I crazy? I feel like this is not something new. Uh, I don't remember where or when they mentioned it, but here we go. Treasure Compass. Discover even more chest locations. There are sure to be some that have slipped through the net, blah, 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 blah. From now on, the treasure compass can detect a wider range of chests, uh, such as time trial challenges and silly that are yet to return to their silly courts. One step closer to treasure. So essentially, right now, the treasure compass only shows some of the treasures that you can obtain and mostly those that are in the wild, right? The thing is that the time trial challenges and the silly courts um, chest they only appear after you've done the challenge or like brought the silly back to its court, which means that they don't actually showed up on the compass. Now they will, which is great. So this is very nice, obviously, for people that want to do exploration and find all of those juicy, juicy chests. This is fantastic. Now, moving on, we also will have an optimization. They, they definitely talk about those two points um, in a previous dev blog. Uh, and this one is that when you change region, it will automatically swap your treasure compass and the Oculus Resonance. So treasure compass is everything chest related and the Oculus Resonance stones are what you can use to find the Oculuses. So the Paracolors, the Hydrocolors, the Dendrocolors, etc, etc. Essentially, now if you have the treasure compass and the Resonance stone equipped to your quick... Um, swap thingy uh to your quick uh i think it is a, a quick um the quick use th this is like a bag and you can have four items in the game right so now if you travel from let's say uh sumeru and you have those two item equipped and you travel from sumeru to fontaine your two items will change previously it wouldn't you need to go into the menu and change what is on your quick access bar now it, it will automatically change them as long as you have them unlocked. This is great. This is just good quality of life. You won't have to mess around in the menus. It will just automatically give you um, the one that fits the region. This is great. And those two optimization will be applied to all currently available regions. And we can assume this is going to be the same for the upcoming ones. Now, moving on. we This is great. This is great. Those two things are good for exploration. This is nice. Now, we have some talk about Artifacts. The autolog feature is now upgraded, handle everything with a single click, blah blah blah. To make it easier for you to manage large quantities of artifacts and to make it simpler to understand and use the autolog feature, the feature has been optimized. Starting from version 5.2, you can use the recommended lock plan. Once enabled, you don't need to do anything yourself, the system will autolog any artifact that meets the requirements. Uh, the recommended general lock plan and set lock plan have presets, auto lock affixes based on common application. The recommended artifact plan will be adjusted in line with updates to the game, so you don't have to adjust anything yourself. If you want to keep things simple, you can enable the setting with just one click. If you have your own custom need, you can set your own plans for sets or for each set or component. So, essentially, the way it functions is that here you have a lock assistance, 
and you can choose to activate whatever is here. So for example, you can activate automatically log five star artifact that meets requirements, right? And then from here, you can set the requirements. So for example, any slot automatically log artifact with both crit rate and crit damage as minor affixes, right? And now you can also set some stuff from specific slots. So like circus, circlet of logos, um, the circle of logos, which is the, the, the circlet, right, slot. Uh, anything with crit rate or crit damage will be automatically locked, etc, etc. And you can set all of these things. Uh, for artifact with only three minor affixes, the plan's number of requirement minor affixes will be reduced by one. You can activate that. So essentially, it's just a bunch of requirements for the system to figure out what they want to auto-log for you. Right? Uh, this, for example, makes it easier for you to you don't have to look at everything manually. If you're a bit lazy about it, then you'll have later to check everything that's been automatically locked and you can see if there's anything that interests you. Uh, personally, I don't know to what extent I'm going to be using this because I like checking every single stuff I get manually. Uh, but this is potentially still very good and quite useful. On top of that, you can even set your own lock plans for specific artifacts. And this, I will say, is very, very good. So if you're trying to farm for a specific set, like the Obstinate Codex or the Hero of the Cinder City, which has two very, very strong new artifacts for Netland, you can choose what you want here. So there is a recommended set plan, but you can choose to edit this and be like, okay, so for the flower, if it has, let's say, you want to build your Moalani and you don't care about anybody else, you can be like, okay, so for the flower, I want HP percentage, I want crit rate, crit damage. If there's not these three affixes, then I don't care, right? Uh, I assume you'll be able to do that because you can see here, include any of the two following minor affixes as well as all the required affixes. So you can pick, okay, I want crit rate, crit damage. And if it has HP percentage or attack percentage or elemental masteries, just lock it right away, right? That way, Essentially, if you have crit rate, crit damage, and there's like an HP flat, it will actually not lock it, right? So this can be very useful if you really want to parse through everything and make sure that only the best of the best artifact potentially gets kept, right? And that doesn't mean that it automatically destroys the rest, right? Don't worry, it just only locks the very, very good ones. So you can always go afterward and check everything. Now... The artifact astral mark feature now available. As well as using the auto lock, you can now use the marking function to filter your artifacts even further. This is a favorite system. Uh, this can be paired with the auto lock feature, so artifact that means your basic requirements are automatically locked, while those you choose to focus on are marked with a star. Artifact that are not locked can be salvaged or used for mystic offerings. There we go. Marked artifact will be automatically locked and given priority display in the artifact list to make it easier for you to locate them. This is great, let's say you have five very good pieces, but two of them are like perfect. You can make them your favorite ones and they will show up in front. That way it's gonna be easier to switch your artifact between your characters since we still don't have proper loadouts. Yeah, I know I'm giving a backhanded comment, uh, compliments, because we still don't have the character artifact loadout. I'm still upset about this shit. I, I swear to God, give us a loadout. Anyway, moving on. Um, I will say I this is nice, but I really wish they gave us the uh, the garbage icon, right? To just say this is gonna be a fodder, right? When you receive artifacts, I don't want to only be able to lock them or make them as favorite artifacts. I also want to mark them as I don't care, and I want them to go to the garbage can because sometimes some of them I lock because I know that they have all that I want. Um, and others I don't lock because I'm like, okay, maybe I can give it four levels, see what happens, and then I can decide what to do. And some of them I know are pure garbage and I don't want to keep them. And I wish we had that icon just like we do in HSR. I think it's great. Uh, and we also have that in Zenith Zone Zero. We need this in this game too. All right, moving on. A uh, feature for sorting artifacts in order of when they were obtained. Sometimes you may wish to prioritize checking the artifact that you have most recently obtained. Starting from version 5.2, a button will be added to the artifact page in your inventory, allowing you to sort them by the time obtained. I think this is actually pretty nice because you don't have to go through the filters and whatnot. Honestly, going through the filters and whatnot actually kind of bothers me sometimes because I feel like it's too annoying. So here you can literally just click the button, it always shows, and then it will show you everything that you've recently obtained. That way you can quickly go over them and see, uh, level them a little bit, see if it rolls on the right substats and all of that. So that is pretty nifty. Now, moving on, the weapon selection page optimization. Did I refine the catalyst to rank 4 or 5? Maybe we should check to make sure. So essentially, 
Um, it is to make it more convenient um, to check weapons you already have uh, when obtaining new weapons, right? This is specific for forging and battle pass, right? This doesn't really apply for anything else because, I mean, those are the two moments you can really, like, check when you obtain another weapon or weapon in another circumstances. It's not like a, you have a choice as to what you receive, but when you craft or when you pick in a battle pass, it's important to know um, what your current gear level is at. And we actually have that, I believe, in HSR. Uh, and maybe Zenless Zone Zero Two. So this is great that this is coming here. Essentially, you will now know from the battle pass when you have to select which of the 10 weapons you want. That's a lot of them. You will automatically see on the right side which of those weapons you have. So here we can see there's like one level 90 weapon that he's already refined for. And you do have one that is like just a further one. So you're like, okay, so I can use this to get this one to refinement 5. And I don't need to get another copy of it, right? So this is just nice. It allows you to more easily figure out which weapon you want to get from the battle pass or which weapon you want to make sure to forge. Actually forge an extra weapon of one of the forgeable ones. And I'm just like, it serves no purpose right now. I goofed up. So this is nice. It's good quality of life. Moving on, Serenity Pot. Starting from version 5.2, you can purchase wood that you've already obtained from the Realm Depot in the Serenity Pond. What's more, the cooldown for using the boon of the Elder Tree will be reduced from 15 seconds to 5 seconds. So this just allows you to buy some of the wood as well as... I'm pretty sure the boon of the Elder Tree is what allows you to change some of the wood you have into another type of wood. This is good so you don't have to go and wander on the overworld to hit some trees. Now, this is the most interesting feature to me. All of this is quality of life, and this is good. We like quality of life, but this, this is not quality of life. This is meta-defining. Increased base damage for certain elemental reactions. Unfortunately, we don't have very specific numbers here. We don't have exactly the values. I've seen some stuff floating around online. I, this is to take with a grain of salt, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cover that here. But we are going to look at what is getting buffed. Based on continued observation of the different elemental reactions in combat, adjustments will be made to allow a wider variety of characters and lineups to shine. Starting from version 5.2, the base damage of the overloaded, superconduct, electrocharge, and shatter reaction will be increased. These adjustments have already been implemented on the version 5.2 test server, and we will continue to observe the result to ensure the quality of your combat experience. So, first and foremost, there have some, there have been some content creators who do have access to the test server, and they have been, from what I can tell, allowed to actually show the changes. So this is definitely something you can find on YouTube. I don't have access to the contents, uh, the the creator server, so or the test server, so I can't show you. But if you want to see in action how much of an effect it has, do check those CCs out, right? Now, for the reaction themselves. Overloaded is Fire and Electro, Pyro and Electro, I'm pretty sure. Um, Pyro and Electro is very, very strong. You can have some massive damage. I like running my team, um, which is going to be uh, Arlequino, Beidou, uh, Chevreuse, and Fischl. It's so strong for my Arlequino. Uh, Arlequino is very, very good. Um, now, Overloaded sometimes is disliked because um, the explosion actually pushes away enemies, which can be very frustrating. So here, increasing the damage could be a way to kind of make it still worth it, even though the enemies are flying about, right? So this is kind of nice. Superconduct. Now, a lot uh, Superconduct and Shatter, those are two um, reaction that actually are linked to cryo. And I think cryo currently is the worst elemental reaction, or the worst element in the game. Cryo has been in a bad state for a very long time. Uh, character like, you know, Shenhe, Ganyu, um, Ayaka have been really struggling. And I think this is very nice because this character are, are quite good, but the element has been tough on them um, and that comes from the fact that more and more enemies are immune to being frozen and unfortunately because the element and the reaction focus around you know well freezing enemies especially when it comes to you know freeze um, 
it's been tough because that also means that like the shatter reaction don't work either, so physical doesn't matter. That's why Eula is in such a terrible state, amongst other things. That's not the only issue why Eula is, is in a bad state, also because, you know, she uh, deals poorly with multi-wave content and all of that, but... It has to be said that I think it's very important to make some of those reactions better, especially those tied to Cryo. So I hope this is going to be helping. I'm pretty sure Superconduct... Am I crazy? Is Superconduct... I'm, I'm pretty sure Superconduct is Cryo and Electro. I, I want to double check. Super intense Googling. You're so dumb. Conduct, you are really dumb. Uh, For real. Yeah, okay. I'm not stupid. Good stuff. And then Electro Charge, I think this is just Electro and Hydro, and Shatter is Physical and Freeze. So let's have a look. Um, Hydro and... Oh, yeah, there we go. Electro Charge. And then we have Shatter. Shatter is a bit special. I don't think it's got... It is actually shown here. Uh, Geophysical means Shatter. And if we look at those here, uh, Overload... So, Electro and Hydro is Electro Charge. Do we have the number here? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, ticks once per second every tick reduces your Hydro and Electro or is affected target by 0 0.4 and it will deal some damage. Uh, this is like a dot, essentially. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see that those less used reactions are getting a buff and I think this is very important, right? Uh, so we are getting a buff for the, for Electro Charge, for Shatter. What has me very curious about the Shatter buff is that we really don't have any kind of like physical characters. Um, we haven't had any kind of physical character. We haven't had any kind of like physical buffer. Uh, that was like Mika or whatever, but like it's it's just not enough, right? Um, so I'm really wondering what's going to happen here. Obviously, it does work with some form of Geo, uh, which maybe, I mean, maybe it's going to give some value to, you know, maybe chillen and main DPS, or maybe give a bit more interest into running more varied composition for some Geo DPS, like, you know, Arateki Ito or Navia and stuff like that. I'm very curious as to how good that might be, uh, but for the rest, I think overall it's it's good stuff and it's most importantly needed stuff, right? Superconduct as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and hopefully this is uh, this is going to end up making more composition be, uh, you know, actually usable. At um, and I mean, you can still use them, but it's just they feel bad to play, essentially. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what has you the most excited. Which is the reaction you you really want buffed in here? What are your hopes for the future? Which character you hope to get buffed from this increase in damage? And I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all the good good, and I'll see you later.